So for this video, we'll be talking about a hack on how to quickly determine if a number is prime or composite. We will do this by presenting a theorem that would simplify things on how we can easily find the factors of a number. So let's start. So our theorem states that a composite number n has a prime factor that is at most the floor of square root of n. So first, when we say the floor of square root of n, this one, uh, what we simply refer to that is that we round down a number to its nearest integer. So say if we have 6.25, its outcome is 6. Now if this one, let's say, let's change this to 6.25. 99. Even though it's tempting to round it up, when applying the floor function, the outcome is still 6 since we round it down to the nearest integer. So just take note of that. So now, what we're basically doing here is that in this theorem, we are checking if a number has a prime factor wherein the largest amount is only this one. So this will really restrict our selection of factors since we have the limit that this one is only the highest. And also note that we're only checking the prime factor since if that number, say the number that we got, that we are given has a composite factor that immediately implies that it has a prime factor. See, if the number that we have is divisible by 4, or it has a factor of 4, then that implies that it also has a factor of 2, since 4 is 2 times 2. So, what we really need to know is that if it has a prime factor. So, although it still seems complex, we'll try to use it in an example to, to concretely see if on how it works. So let's have, say we have 37 and we are to determine if this one is prime or composed. So first, applying the theorem, we have the square root, we take this one as n, so we have square root of 37, the floor of it, applying it in calculator, we have the square root of 37 is Oh, we're going to use the approximate symbol since we're dealing with decimals here. So it is approximately 6.0828, which, like the floor function, is 6. So the prime factors that is um, less than or equal to 6, since we are dealing with at most, is, or are, I mean, 2, 3, and 5. So we simply check these factors. Now observe that 37 is not divisible by 2, since it is not even. So this one, we cross that out. Now clearly it's also not divisible by 3, since 3 plus 7 is equal to 10, which is not divisible by 3. So it's not divisible by 3. And 5 clearly no since it ends in 7, not 0 or 5. So it's also not divisible by 5. Which means that this number has no prime factors. Or this implies that this one is prime. Let's try more examples. Now, just a note, feel free to pause the video and try it on your own. So we have 61. Let's check if this number is a prime. So we have applying the theorem again. We have the floor of the square root of 61 is approximately this 7.8102. Five. 
applying the floor function, this would give us 7. So the prime factors that are at most 7 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So checking it, first clearly 2 is, does not divide 61 since 61 is not even. So it's removed 3 as well since 6 plus 1 is 7, which is not divisible by 3. 5 also no, since the last digit is not 0 or 5. For 7, uh, to check if it is divisible by 7, let's try to divide it manually. So 7 divided by 61. This would give us 8, 6, so there's a remainder of 5. So it's also not divisible by 7. So this implies that this number is prime. Let's go to our third example. So let's try to check if 103 is prime or composite. Applying our theorem again, we have square of 103 is approximately, applying it in calculator, square of 103 is approximately 10.14889, which is equal to 10. So we check the primes, 2, 3, 5, and 7. So clearly this number is not divisible by 2 since it is not even, it is odd. 3 as well since 1 plus 0 plus 3 gives 4 which is not divisible by 3. Since it ends in 3 not in 0 or 5 then it is not divisible by 5. Now 7 to check if it is divisible by 7, we divide manually. So we have this is 1, and this would give us 4, 8, which um, subtracting this one would give us 5. So there is a remainder of 5. So it is not divisible by 7. So hence again, 103 is prime. Let's try 221. So applying this one, we have the floor of the square of 21 is approximately, again, calculating it, we have, this is approximately 14.867, which is equal to 14. So we check the factors 2, 3, 5, 7, what else, mm, 11, 13, and that's it. So first, obviously it is not divisible by 2 since it is not even, 3 as well since 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, so it's not divisible by 3. Since it ends in 1, it's not divisible by 5. For 7, we have 7, 2, 2, 1, or well, let's try to apply the, the divisibility rule. So we have 2, 2, minus twice the last digit, this one should give us 22 minus 2, which is equal to 20, which is clearly not divisible by 7. So, it's also not divisible by 7. Now for 11, we have applying the divisibility rule, we know that the difference of its, the sum of the, its alternating digits must be equal to 0 or divisible by 11. So we have the alternating digits out here. 
So 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Minus 2 will give us 1. So it is not neither divisible by 11 nor 0. So it is not divisible by 11. How about 13? Since we don't have a divisibility rule for 13, we try to manually divide. So this was 13, so that's 91, and 91 divided by 13, that is 7. So we have found that this number is divisible by 13, which implies that 221 is composed. So that's basically how we apply the theorem. What we do is we limit our choices on how, on the possible prime factors that a number has. By doing this, we're able to quickly determine if a number is prime or composed. So that's all for this video.